Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna if you're new and many of you are here because of my scathing Mulan review that I posted uh, a few months ago. And ever since then, I think I've accidentally become kind of an ambassador for Asian representation in American media. And I was asked to share my thoughts on the new animated movie, Over the Moon, which came out on Netflix very recently. So today I'm gonna be doing just that. Overall, I just wanna say that I did like the movie. You could even say I'm over the moon. <laughs> so if you haven't heard about the movie, it centers around the story of Chang'e, the Chinese moon goddess. And the movie centers around this girl Fei Fei, and how her late mother used to tell her the story of Chang'e, and how the goddess would wait on the moon for her one true love. Everybody around her thinks that it's just a silly myth, and they ridicule Fei Fei for believing in Chang'e. So Fei Fei devises a plan to build a rocket ship and go to the moon to prove that Chang'e is real, and she does just that. Growing up Chinese American, I've been very familiar with the story of Chang'e, but in case you aren't, there are some different versions of this. In one of the original versions, there were 10 suns in the sky which scorched the earth and obviously made people very uncomfortable. So uh, the archer Ho Yi shot down nine of them so that there would only be one sun. And as a reward, he was given an immortality elixir and he didn't want to take it without his beloved wife Chang'e. So he gave it to her for safekeeping. One day when Ho Yi is out hunting, his apprentice breaks into his house and demands that Chang'e give him the elixir. And she's like, hell no. So she takes it and then she floats up into the moon and Ho Yi to honor the memory of his beloved wife set out sweets and pastries for her and also made sacrifices for her, which probably best explains why she was worshipped as a goddess. In another version, Chang'e actually stole the pills for herself and she floated up into the sky, probably because she just wanted to get away, um, probably because it wasn't that happy of a marriage or something. In another version, Ho Yi was actually imprisoned for killing eight of the Jade Emperor's children. What Chang'e did was stole two immortality pills and she broke into his cell she took one, then she started floating up to the sky, and then he also took one, but the Jade Emperor pulled him back and to punish him further, placed him on the sun so that he could never cross the moon and never be reunited with his one true love. Except once a year, during the Lunar Festival, the Jade Emperor gets blasted drunk and falls asleep allowing the sun to let Ho Yi off to spend one week out of the year with Chang'e. So there are several different versions. I am most familiar with the first one where he shot down the suns and then she floated into the sky. So over the moon, going into this movie, I was kind of nervous. Asian American representation is scarce and it would just really, really suck if an Asian movie were bad. So I was kind of nervous and I was going into this with very low expectations, having just seen the travesty that was Mulan live action 2020. And I did try to keep in mind that this was a children's film. So of course there are going to be some juvenile aspects of it. Like the animal sidekicks, per usual, they were pretty useless, but you know, there were some points where they drove the plot forward. And I feel like that's pretty common with a lot of animated films. And plus they were really cute. <laughs> so I'm okay with that, I guess. So now I'm going to talk about what I liked about this movie. First of all, the main cast was Asian, which I am freaking elated about. Not everybody was Chinese, but you know, I've mentioned this before, it's okay. Just just getting Asian people is a big deal as it is. And we'll worry about accuracy a little bit later when Hollywood is ready for that conversation. But for right now, I'm happy. Another thing I really liked was how the movie tugged at my heartstrings. I was about to burst into tears like three or five different times in this movie. It just emanated Pixar energy, like the way it portrayed love and loss and um, struggling to move on from the past. And it was kind of a little bit like Inside Out. So if you liked Inside Out, I think you really liked this movie. The music was really rad. I really liked the soundtrack. I also really liked how this movie was set in China, even though it really makes sense that it should be. There were so many aspects of Chinese culture that were shown, for example, um, communication through food, which I thought was really cool. The movie was also really funny. I found myself laughing a lot. Maybe that's just my sense of humor. And this next bit I like and dislike. The fact that Chang'e was a pop star diva. I like it because I was absolutely obsessed with her. She was so dramatic and extravagant and I was just so there for it. Her musical numbers were pretty great, but I also dislike this. I read a review that said the fact that they made her a pop star diva kind of trivialized Chinese culture in order to make it more appealing to Western audiences. And I low-key kind of agree. Um, I feel like she didn't have to be that flamboyant for the story to be a good one. I've talked about this before in my Asian representation video where I brought up how a lot of animated Asian girls have that purple streak in their hair as if they aren't interesting enough with just normal black hair. And then also with Ramona Young's character in the show Never Have I Ever. She's this very, very dramatic flamboyant, like almost a little too flamboyant <laughs> of a theater kid. And although I'm very glad that they didn't have her conform to traditional Asian stereotypes, I was also kind of worried that they did that because they didn't think that she was interesting enough to not be that extra. So I really hope it wasn't that. So yeah, with this movie, Over the Moon, I really did like the fact that Chang'e was a pop star diva. It was very entertaining to watch and I was just, you know, I was living for it, but I, 
I really hope that they didn't do that for the wrong reasons. I definitely would have liked to see her in a more traditional sense, like an ethereal, gentle Chinese mythical goddess, but you know, the fact that they made her a pop star diva, I'm not really complaining um because i liked it let's just hope it wasn't because they didn't think that it would be interesting enough if she was you know in her original form and i also didn't really like how they didn't focus on changa's backstory that much i think i would have really liked to see more of her but you know that's okay because the story is about fei fei and i feel like if they focused more on changa there wouldn't have been enough time for fei fei so um i guess that decision was appropriate even still i definitely think i would have liked to see more of what Chang'e used to be, but you know, can't really complain about that either. And plus there were so many versions of the Chang'e origin story that it's probably best to not pick one and just let the audience run wild with their imagination of what happened. Another thing that I didn't really like was the design of Lunaria, Chang'e's place of dwelling on the moon. It was just very colorful, abstract, neon, 2D. It was kind of weird. It was, it was not what I imagined Chang'e's place of dwelling to be like. She's an ancient Chinese lady, so I thought that she would be more into ancient Chinese architecture or something like that. But you know, who knows? You know, maybe she just has really abstract tastes. My sister, who also saw the film, thought that the simplicity and childishness of the Lunar Kingdom represented Chang'e's childishness and unwillingness to let go of the past. But you know, I disagree. I think that not being able to let go of the past is a very adult thing to do. Like, yeah, in some situations it's very immature, but you know, adults are flawed, everybody's flawed, and I feel like that's a very, very adult thing to not be able to let go. So yeah, for me, her unwillingness to let go of the past doesn't really explain the design of the Lunar Kingdom. And I also didn't really like how there were these like little colorful blobs that inhabited the kingdom. But you know, once again, it is a children's film, so I think that it's okay and I just you know, have to look past that. It's not a deal breaker for me. You know, regardless of that, I think it was still a very enjoyable film. I truly did enjoy this film, but I don't think it's something that I would purposefully want to watch again. I mean, I'd be down, but like, it's not something that I'd be like, oh, I want to watch that movie. I haven't seen it in a while. But even still, it's very hard for a movie to reach that watch again threshold of mine. So, you know, it's not that it was a bad movie. I do recommend if you check it out if you haven't already seen it. And if you have, definitely let me know what you thought. Let's talk about it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!